Hello and welcome to the Vine Life Podcast. I'm Tony Clark, your host, and today I've got the honor of having Mike Mike Palmer on the program. And Mike Palmer, he's a longtime pastor. He has started a 501c3 nonprofit called Mike Palmer Ministries. Now, Mike Palmer Ministries has helped start a church plant in Craiova, Romania. Mike's spiritual gift is exhortation, and after listening to him for a while, you'll certainly understand why. Uh, but it, Part of his ministry is a two, two-fold ministry. One is church health and international missions. Now, I understand what international missions means, I think, but church health, I don't truly understand, but we'll discuss that in a minute. But Mike, without further ado, uh, thank you for being on the program. It is great to be here, and uh, I just thank the Lord for allowing me to be involved in those two different areas. Uh, we were trained in church health as I was in the pastoral ministry uh, uh, the last 15 years of my pastoral ministry. We had training in church health and uh, just uh, I've been really interested in that really all my life uh, and it is a tremendous thing. Uh, there are a lot of unhealthy churches around us uh, and uh, then I was challenged to go on an international mission trip in 1995. I went to Romania, and that grabbed my heart. And I have been literally not just to Romania, but, you know, all over the world, you know, literally uh, on yeah. mission trips and things. And so training pastors and doing some evangelistic work. And so I've been about that for a while, but began the ministry, 501c3, in 2014. So that's, that's how it got, got going. Okay, now it's my understanding you were a longtime pastor, lead pastor, before you started, started Mike Palmer Ministries. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, I had pastored in my life three churches, a small church outside of Chicago. Then I was in Vinton at Mineral Springs Baptist Church uh, for seven years. And then I spent 26 and a half years as the lead pastor at Green Ridge Baptist Church. And we saw tremendous... Uh, growth and maturity and change and uh we led it through what uh, the southern baptists call the conservative resurgence during those years so the church is quite different now from when i from when i came in 1988 yeah i i certainly understand that now at the end of your 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 lead pastor duties at, at green ridge you felt led to start mike palmer ministries is, is that correct that is correct, and uh, I just knew I couldn't stop, you know, just turn it off, you know, and it's part of the calling on, on one's life, and it's something that God's given me some competency, and you mentioned the uh, uh, ex exhortation. Well, a lot of pastors uh, need that uh, encouragement as they leave their church, and so I like to be that to as many guys as I po possibly can. Yeah, certainly, certainly need that, especially today, I'm sure. Now, part of your ministry with Mike Palmer Ministries is certainly international missions, and I do, I've got a grasp of what that means, but church health, uh, why then, what is, what exactly does that mean, Mike? Why, why are you pastoring in, in, in the area of church health or trying to get churches healthy? Are, are, are churches sick? Well, unfortunately, there are a lot of churches that are running, I call it, uh, based upon the preferences of the people. And if those preferences are in line with Scripture, that's great. But more often than not, they're not aligned with the Bible. And what happens is that churches get off track, and they don't mean to, but it happens over time. And uh, churches, you know, when you begin to vector off uh, the beam a little bit, doesn't take, you know, but a few years and you look at yourself and you think, man, I'm far away from where I need to be. And so uh, church health is, uh, is, is a needed thing. And uh, pastors that are renewed, revived, uh, pastors that are doing what they need to do really sometimes allow people to come in and evaluate things in their church for the purpose of helping that church. And that's kind of what, that's what, what I do. Okay. So I'm assuming that you're doing that. You're, you're, you've got a, you've had mission trips to Craiova, Romania with the church plant. Um, why Romania, Mike? Why, why Craiova, Romania? How did you get there? My assignment, I, Johnny Hunt, the former uh, president of the Southern Baptist Convention came to my church at Green Ridge. And he challenged me, he said, Brother Mike, I'd like you to go with me to partner with some churches uh, or some pastors 
uh, in Romania. So I went and uh, the Lord got a hold of my heart and uh, I've been going ever since. And so uh, that particular city of around 300,000 people in that particular region really has not been visited much by Westerners on mission trips. They usually go to more westernized part of the country. So this is sort of the the southern central. It's the left out region. It's, in fact, it's the poorest region of one of the poorest countries in Eastern Europe. And so that's where we go. And uh, we've helped to plant a church there when I was at Green Ridge. And that church is still functioning well. There are only maybe three Baptist churches, maybe seven or eight evangelical churches in that whole county. And uh, so there's tremendous need. Yeah, and, and, you know, you look at the news today, and that's the region, or that's right beside Ukraine, if I look at, if I look at a map. So uh, tell me about the interaction um, with, with Cryova, for example. Let, let's, start, let's start here. Tell me about a, store, a life that's been changed with your ministry to Cryova, Romania. My goodness. Uh, first of all, we engage with a, a pastor and his wife. I remember in 1999, I went to a, a baby de dedication for his first child, who was a son, and now he has five sons <laughs> and uh, doing tremendously. But I remember one family in particular that, that began to attend. We ministered to them, and the mother was a physician, the dad was an in engineer, and the daughter was uh, finishing high school. Now she's going to be a doctor. She's married to that pastor's son, okay, the second oldest son, and it's almost like, wow, this is a, a another couple. It's going to be a power couple for the Lord. It's going to be an excellent thing, and there, are, well, you know, I could mention many lives that there's like 20 or so young adults that meet on Saturday night that would not have been there were it not for that church, and so they're doing a great work, and uh making a difference in a tremendous amount of lives and they're you know trying to penetrate other other churches and you know plant other preaching points in churches throughout the area yeah and just from from the outset here it seems like mike palmer ministries has been able to make disciples who then make other disciples is that correct well uh you know we did it through the pastor i mean i really didn't do it per se but through the support and encouragement that we, we were able to give which was strategic in nature, then that particular place became a place where people came to the Lord and grew in Christ. And even today, they're making a significant uh, difference in that city. It's wonderful. Yeah, and, and I, I think on your website um, at Mike Palmer Ministries, you talk about 2% in Romania or that region in Romania. Tell me what that means. That means that only 2% in the country are evangelical in the sense that they believe that Christ is the only way. They believe the Bible is the Word of God uh, and, you know, believe uh, what the Word says about itself and about the Lord. And that's about it. Uh, it's very uh, destitute as far as the gospel. Uh, the Orthodox religion is almost magical uh, in, in its approach and how they how they do things. It's just, uh, it's very sad. People know that Jesus is, you know, the son of God, but they don't have any concept of any personal relationship with, with him. And so it, it really is, it's tough. Yeah. And it seems like, and it seems like Mike Palmer ministries is, is a, uh, God's using that to, uh, to, to enter that region to, in essence, tell people that they can have a personal relationship with the, with the creator of the cosmos. Right, exactly. And uh, in other words, it's, it's kind of interesting when they find out he's interested in them. <laughs> you know, uh, we're actually leaving on June 9. We're going to be doing a basketball clinic. This is our first time doing this. We've, been, we've gone into the schools, but this time we're renting a gym we're asking students to come, and we're going to have a clinic uh, Tuesday through Friday, and basically we'll tell all those kids that come about the Lord, you know, and it'll be the first time that they've really understood the gospel. Yeah, and I, I saw that, I think, on your, your Facebook feed and maybe on your website as well, about a basketball gym and, and um, using... Tell me, just in your own experience, how can you relate to others, maybe through sports, 
maybe through music? In other words, how can you relate to people through sports and, and share the gospel? Why is that kind of a common bond or an opening for the gospel, just in your own words? Well, with uh, we're looking at middle school and high school students and even older children. Uh, it That's a, a universal language. Sports is a universal language. Kids enjoy playing. They also enjoy learning. We actually teach the game in, in a way that it helps the children learn it to get better, to improve. They all, they all want to do that. And actually over there, there's a lot of people that uh, are teachers in schools that haven't been taught how to teach the game. That's not one. Of, it's a popular game, but not, you know, soccer is the big deal over there. Everybody knows the, that, that game inside and out. But basketball is still fairly new on the stage. And uh, so we use that. It gives us a good venue, and it also helps us to do something for them. In other words, we don't just come and, and you know, it's not just us about getting a hold of them to share the gospel, but it's us investing something in them that they will remember from us after, long after we're gone. So not only do we invest the gospel, but we help them in some other areas as well. And so... Uh, we, and we've been doing this for a long time. I, I called a guy last month, and he said, he, I was talking to him, he said, oh, you're that guy that does the, that does the basketball stuff, right? <laughs> so we've been doing this for a few years, and so we've got a reputation in the community that's a good one, and we try to lever that for, for the gospel. Mike, with the war in the region uh, with Ukraine and Russia, uh, that's right beside Romania. They're, they're connecting countries. Uh, but the impact of the war in the region, has that broadened your ministry in any way? Uh, has your ministry changed from what it was a year ago? Certainly, I never saw this coming. But if you're a Romanian citizen, you were probably wary of Russia and Putin and that kind of uh, mindset because you had lived under that for many years. So they were wary of this happening. And uh, as it did happen, over half a million re refugees came into the Romanian region and country, and some came into the southern central area. But the main ministry that we've had is that even the church that we help plant is now uh, being uh, used to collect food, buy food, box up food, and, and put it on a truck. And the guy that's in, in this church, it works for the major uh, national shipper, in the in in, the, in there, and so they're able to, to put it all on a truck. Goes to the uh, U Ukrainian border, then it, then it's taken from there to Kiev, and then into the eastern parts of the country uh, where the it's it's needed. So the food from Cryova ends up going to the area of greatest need in the country, and so it's been fantastic to be a, a small part of that. And these guys, I mean, what's been amazing, th these pastors of these churches in that area, and all, in, in Bucharest, and uh, also with the, the Vulture area, anyway, they are, they're, they're on it. I mean, they are doing a great job, and they have been taking food in, supplies in, since the war started. And so uh, what we did is that rather than giving to an organization, we were actually able to take cash money and put it in the hands of the people actually doing the work. And so that's what we're going to be doing and uh, we're, uh, as, as we travel. Uh, and so June 9, if anyone would like to give uh, through Mike Palmer Ministries, anything that they give will be taken directly to boots on the ground doing the work, which I thought is great, you know. So uh, that's how our ministry has changed a little bit. Yeah. So again, if you want to contribute to the the effort that's going on there and, and there in a positive way uh, to to spread the gospel and 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 to do a lot of good things in the area, you can certainly do that by contributing to Mike Palmer Ministries. And we'll give the links, Mike, uh, below the video specifically for donation and all of that, all of those links as well. So, yeah, that's great. Uh, Mike Palmer Ministries is working uh, in that Ukrainian area uh, for good. Uh, Mike, you, you spoke about, and you touched on this just a little bit, about churches, and I think it has to do with church health, you mentioned. But churches in our Western culture, uh, you say that they want a Jesus of their own making. What exactly do you mean by that? Well, I think they want a church without self-denial, 
or a, a, a savior without denial, self-denial. And Jesus said, you know, we're to take up our, to deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow him. Uh, westernized Christianity has made Jesus a Sunday go to meeting kind of a thing without any genuine di discipleship and depth during the week and an ongoing relationship with him such that your life has changed. And what we see is we see people that are going to church or have been going to church, but they're the same now as they were 10 and 20 and 30 years ago. There's no substantial directional life change. And so what we're saying is if you're a healthy church, I mean, people from the pastor right on down, they should be changing to be a little more like Christ and to be making an effective difference uh, in their in their neighborhoods and in their cities. So, you know, that's kind of what we're saying. And uh, I guess a healthy church has biblical intentionality. And uh, we don't see that a lot. We see people just casually coasting through life uh, and not really desiring to make a, a difference. And uh, that's just not, not, not of God. I remember John Piper in his uh, uh, book, Don't Waste y Your Life, he talked about this woman who said, well, when I retire, I just want to go walk the seashore somewhere and pick up seashells and, and, and enjoy this. And it's like, come on, man, there's got to be more to life than, than, than this, okay? And in fact, when you retire, that should mean you have more opportunity to serve God and to do things for the Lord and with the Lord and in his family than you ever have had prior to that. So anyway, I just see a, a, see church, and that's why we have so many new churches, church plants, uh, because we see people wanting to begin a church with intentionality and biblical health from the outset. Now, I will say this. I just finished pastoring uh, Boone's Mill Baptist Church, and they recently voted to dissolve as a church, to finish out as Boone's Mill Baptist Church, and unite with a church plant coming to Boone's Mill called Ridgeview. And tomorrow, this Sunday, is their last Sunday as Boone's Mill Baptist Church. And so they've done something that's highly unusual. They have chosen the way of the cross, okay, to uh, basically give up who they are and say, we want a fresh start with a new leadership team coming in, and we're going to let this, this group leave. We're going to support them, and we're going to be with them, and we're going to be a new church. And so that is called a replant. And uh, that's something that's going to be happening in Bo Boone's Mill. And that, that new plant should start October the 2nd. And so I was fortunate enough to watch the Lord. I mean, now, that was a supernatural thing as God moved those people from one place to another. And it was fantastic. Now, let me just say, you can teach church health all you want to. Apart from the supernatural hand of God, nothing is going to happen. So that happened there, and I, I am just excited uh, about that. So uh, that's one success story <laughs> in, in the uh, the transitional pastor role, okay? So I, I just thank the Lord for that. So what are Pastor Mike's plans for the future? What do you have on your schedule? Boy, I appreciate that. Of course, I've got the next mission trip coming up uh, June 9th. Uh, we'll be gone for 13 days. That's the outreach through the basketball ministry. But in the fall, in October, I'm going to Bucharest to another church plant uh, to be with a guy to uh, invest in his church, be at the seminary in uh, Bu Bucharest and try to encourage and teach and have a specific assignment for teaching during a week there with the students. And then there's a leadership forum there in town. I'm a business major and um, hopefully I can uh, invest in some of those guys, the leadership forum. It's a secular group. Hopefully I can go and, and be there. So we've got that coming up. And then uh, in Guatemala, we'll be going back to train some uh, pastors there. And it, it's literally internationally, uh, the, the, the field is wide open. I mean, I'm, I, I'll, I'll go as the Lord opens up some doors, uh, you know, the rest of my life. I told Hazel, I said, uh, my last mission trip with a, guy, a World War II vet, he was 82 years old. I said, 
man, I hope I'm as good as that guy. I mean, he's still, I, I hear, on, you know, serving the Lord and, you know, in his 80s. And so my plan is to, to not stop unless I'm physically forced to be to have to stop. I want to continue to, to do this, and I want to continue to encourage uh, pastors uh, strategically and help those in need. And uh, But in, in reality, as I was gone on the last uh, mission trip and as I served at Boone's Mill, uh, you'll appreciate this. I really sense God's call to invest in my grandchildren, and I need to spend some time. I've got a th three- to five-year window, and so I need to kind of refocus there and invest some more time and really help them be disciples, you know, do all I can there as well. So that's on my, on my agenda as well. And I've got a, I actually have a, a Bible study group at North Roanoke. I'm hoping we can reconfigure that. We're going to take some time away this summer to pray and seek God. But my son challenged me, he said, Dad, I was thinking about reaching some baby boomers. He said, Dad, why don't you try to reach some millennials? And I went, oh, okay. Uh, so, you know, millennials need to be mentored and some they, they need that, that kind of relationship in their lives. So we're looking at the possibility of changing our group a little bit and trying to target uh, some millennials and maybe some, you know, underneath that. So we'll see what the Lord does. I got plenty to do. I got plenty to do. And plus, I want to write a book. Yeah, and, and Mike, uh, you, you, your gift is exhortation, encouragement, and do you mind me asking your age? I am 72. 72. I turned 73 okay, so in you're, August. Yeah. So, so you're, you're 72, going, going on uh, 73, and you're, you're extremely, extremely active. Uh, what would be your exhortation, Mike? What would be in your encouragement for those that are reaching retirement age? Maybe they're 65. They're getting ready to step down from their position. Uh, how would you encourage them that they don't have to stop? They can, they can keep going with, with, with God's encouragement, God's strength. How would you encourage them? I would say don't underestimate your influence. I think a lot of people, when they reach that age, they feel like they've sort of gotten to a place where really young people don't care. But I'll tell you this, young people, young adults, median adults respond to love. If you'll take time to love some people, I guarantee you that the Lord will bring you opportunity to have relationships to invest in some of these people, and you'll have more joy at this stage of life than you ever thought possible. But you, again, you, it comes back to the intentionality. You've got to, you know, you've got to, with the Lord, you've got to sort of, sort of ask, well, Lord, who is it? What is it? What do you have for me? And you've got to seek the Lord, and out of that, let that come, you know, towards people. It always, let's let the Lord's mission always involves others. Always, it's not about us. Okay, it's always involving other uh, folks. And uh, if you can make that what your life is about, then God will give you some tremendous joy and peace. And by the way, as you face the end of life, what better way than to be able to look back and see the people that God has touched through your life? What better satisfaction could it be at that place than to do that? So I would challenge you. Give God an opportunity to use you to touch others. There's nobody, no personality, no temperament, nobody that's not able to be used by the living God to touch other lives. And that's, that's what it's all about. It's, it's wonderful. So uh, I'm thrilled to have this small ministry, but I will say this, it's a strategic ministry. We are, the Lord's using us. I've got a couple of basketball coaches going with me. They love to go over there. You know, we're going to be doing this for as long as we can breathe. And uh, so I'm, I'm excited about it. And uh, just appreciate you asking me about that today, Tony. Oh, absolutely. It, but that's great exhortation. That's great encouragement. It seems like to those that are reaching retirement age that God's not through with them yet. And, and, may, and in fact, maybe their life is truly just beginning because they'll have more time to invest in e eternal things instead of the temporary. So, Mike... That, that's great encouragement. Uh, thank you for that. So, uh, Pastor Mike, how can someone, if they want to support your ministry financially, how can they, they do that? 
It's very easy. I have a website that's not a real fancy dancy site. It's not a lot to it. MikePalmerMinistries.com. Click connect and scroll down to donate, and that's how you give. And uh, my email is uh, RevMike1 at Cox.net. You can communicate with me a little bit about how you want that to be used. That's fine, but you know, just MikePalmerMinistries.com, hit connect, go down to donate, and there it's a PayPal thing, and very easy to do. So, uh, and we appreciate it. And, and I'll be honest with you, uh, <laughs> with airline tickets now, if you do international missions, it's uh, it's costing, uh, you know, a little bit. I'll just say it's really, it's bizarre. I mean, prices have doubled in the last three, three months uh, to fly uh, internationally. It's crazy out there. Well, um, very good wisdom, and if you want to support Mike Palmer, uh, you can go to MikePalmerMinistries.com, and, and again, all of these links will be below the video. So, Pastor Mike, I can't thank you enough for coming on the program today and, and telling us what you do. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate you. And until next time.